Well, good evening. Good to be with you again. Hope you've been blessed today. We're going to look at another scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes. That word Ecclesiastes means church. It means assembly. And I'm thankful for the assembly that I have when we come out together. If you happen to tune in, I feel like you're right here with me. As Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 14, it says this, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, not anything from it, or not anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. Now, you know, I always enjoy writing stuff down. That's part of my responsibility is to try to sort of know what I'm talking about when I come out here. Um, what do you know about God? If somebody was to quiz you, a lot of people have knowledge Maybe head knowledge. Maybe you might be one that has not, you know, I have a certain amount of knowledge, but, you know, my knowledge is very, very limited. Um, I don't feel like I'm a stupid person, but I do feel sometimes that, you know, when you use the word pastor, the word pastor to me always reminds me of someone that has been uh, to school, but, um, I feel like that you can take the scripture and read the scripture and, and feel like that you get something from it when you come out here and you ask the Lord to bless the words that you say, you want to be a blessing to people. I want to be a blessing to people. I want what little bit that I know even if it's just a simple verse, I want that verse to be explained as well as it can be explained. A lot of people will preach and they will use verses, but they don't explain the verse. You know, I want to explain the verse. I want to tell you what I get out of the verse. Now, what you get out of the verse, that might be your um, decision of what you get out of it. But I like to try to explain what I get out of the verse. Let me read that verse 14 again. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, that men should fear before him. Well, the first thing that I wrote down, what do you know about God? Well, put Put the question on me. What do I know about God? I know how to read. I know how to understand when I look at a verse and I'm gaining understanding in that verse. This writer must have known the Lord personally. You know, I don't know Solomon's background all that well. I'm not uh, what you would call a super deep Bible teacher. I can't tell you what the book of Solomon, what the word Solomon means and when it was written and who it was written to and all of that. You know, I'll, I'll leave that to people that are good at explaining Bible history. My job really is not to explain to you Bible history my job is to just try to get you to think about maybe how I read this verse and what I think about this verse. Do you know him or do you know about him? If somebody was quizzing you, what do you know about Jesus? Would you know about Jesus or what would you know about Jesus? There's a difference between do you know him or do you know about him? There is a difference. Um, I grew chickens for 30 plus years. 
You know, that doesn't make me a master poultry producer, but I did it for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of things that I learned as I did it for 30 plus years. But you know, I feel like that I have 30 years of experience in knowing about chickens. Chickens gave me my livelihood. It gave me my property. It gave me my house. It gave me my income. You know, I'm glad of that. It's one thing to know about something than to know something. I would rather know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior rather than come out here and try to impress you in the things that I know spiritually. Because I sometimes wonder, Lord, did I do the verse justice? Well, what has he done for you? What has the Lord done for you? Now, if I was to go back and read the verse, you can go back and read the verse. What has he done for you? What has he done for me? He's given me peace. He's given me joy, even though there's times that I get plumb, downright aggravated. You know what? I still have peace, and I can come out here tonight and have peace. I'm not the type of person that just complains and complains and complains. I've done learned that there's things that I can do and I can complain about if I want to. And then I just learned to know, just come out, come out to my little dark room, come out and turn on the light and open up the Bible and let the Bible talk to me. That's what I try to do. What has he done for you? Has he saved your soul? He's given me salvation. I still remember the day. It started on uh, August the 15th, 2007. And the time that it was officially taken possession of was the 26th of August of 2007. I still remember it very well. You know, when I read this verse right here, and I see this verse. It says, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Well, let me tell you what I believe is forever. Salvation is forever. My salvation is forever. Do I deserve salvation? Did I work for salvation? Did I inherit salvation? No, I think. I just simply asked him for it. I certainly didn't deserve it. And let me go ahead and bust all of y'all's bubbles now. You didn't deserve it either. No man deserves salvation. But God gives it to the ones who are humble enough to admit that they need salvation. If you're out there tonight and you don't have salvation, it's hard for you to relate to this verse right here. Because what I get out of this verse, salvation is forever. And if you are out here and you don't have salvation, then you need salvation. You can't add anything to salvation. Now, you can be a good person. You can memorize the Bible. I know people that just memorize the scripture. That doesn't mean that you 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 can add anything to it. Your works won't help you. There's a lot of people that believe I'm going to do good work, so therefore God owes me. Let me bust your bubble again. God don't owe you nothing. He owes you hell is what he owes you for. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, the scripture has no private interpretation. There's only one interpretation and that's God the Father's interpretation. I don't have a right to come out here and say, well, by God, this is the way this verse is supposed to be. No, it's the Holy Spirit's word. The Holy Spirit says that it's no private interpretation. I can't go and make the scripture say what I want it to say. I got to back it up with what the conviction is, what I believe that God is trying to tell me. To watch my words, to don't get off the limb very, very far, 
in religion because when you do, you know what happens? The limb breaks. The limb snaps off when you walk too far away from the center of God's word. Your limb will break off on you. I don't want to go there. I don't want to break off. I'm not scared of losing salvation, people. Don't get me wrong. I'm talking about I don't want to leave somebody so far away from the trunk of the tree. I want to stay as near to the trunk of the tree as I can because that's where my benefit is. That's where my power is. That's the reason I say there's no private interpretation. God owns your salvation. If God gave it to you, don't you think he owns it? Sure he does. He owns your salvation. It's a free gift. And if you want to go over there and look at it, go read uh, John 5 and 24, I believe it is. Go read John 5 and 24. It tells you what two things you have to do to get salvation. You have to believe the gospel and you have to hear the gospel. And people want to add all this other stuff I've said it a lot like this. It's like making a, a, a pot of soup. You add this. You add that. You add the other. You add the okra. You add the tomatoes. You add the hamburger. You add the macaroni. You add every vegetable you can think of. And you make a big pot of soup. But you know what? When you leave out one of the key ingredients, the soup ain't all that good. You know what I always do when I make soup or when my wife makes soup? I take a spoon and I taste the juice and I see if the juice has enough salt and it never does. So what do I do? I add more salt. I add salt because you can't eat it without enough salt to make it taste good. When you leave out the okra, you miss the okra. When you leave out the peas, you miss the peas. What am I trying to say right here? It's a free gift. And Jesus just simply wants you to have believing and hearing the gospel. Why? Why am I saying that? We will stand before him one day. Do you realize that we're going to stand before Christ one day? We are. We just don't know when. He will look for his free gift that he has given to his people. He's going to look for it. If I'm in here on my desk right now and I'm trying to find something, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look. I'm going to look for it. I'm going to search where it is. Where did I put that thing? And sometimes my eyes can't focus real good but when I really narrow down on what I'm looking for, and I remember, sometimes I forget what I'm looking for. But then I stop and I meditate and I think, oh, I'm looking for my pen or I'm looking for my glasses. And generally, it was right where I laid them the last time. He will look for his free gift that is in you. Will he find his gift inside you. Now think about what I'm saying today. Will he, will he find the gift that he put into you when he looks at you on that day? Is he going to find salvation in you? That's a question that is probably one of the most important questions that I've ever asked. Will you be afraid of him on that day? This verse right here, it says here at the very end, And God doeth it that men should fear before him. You know what? You don't have to fear before him if you've been born again. Now you're going to fear before him when you know that you could have done more that you didn't do, that you could have witnessed more, you could have prayed more, I could pray more, I could do a whole lot of things more, and you know what? I believe that we're going to be ashamed on that day, not only in rejoicing that we made it there, but I believe that certain people is going to be ashamed because they didn't do no more than they did, and they're going to feel guilty 
because they didn't do what they could have done. That's my point. Will you be afraid of him? And the last question I've got, what will he say to you? Now we hear, I hear myself right now saying, oh, Brother Ken's going to say, uh, depart from me, I never knew you. Maybe so. Is he going to say, enter on in, thou good and faithful servant? Mm -hmm. Then with the two things he's going to say, do you think he's going to dance around if he knows that you don't have the free gift of salvation? Do you think he's going to hee-haw around and just keep you in front of him? Or is he going to say, no, depart from me, I never knew you? And then you know what you're going to do? You're going to remember this little video. You're going to think about the warning that you heard. And you're going to wonder why you let it fall on deaf ears. Don't let it fall on deaf ears. If you need help, call me. The website's Elderly Ministry. The phone number is on YouTube. It's on my website. You got a phone number there. Share it. Share the video. If you got people that are lost, share the video. Do your part to share the gospel to somebody else, okay? We'll see y'all next time.